Greetings, Space Cadets. It is I, Captain OGGM of the USS OGGM Enterprise of Spacey Things Stuff. It's about 12 noon. It's the 10th day of November 2022. It's kind of... Ooh, why is the window closed? It's a little uh, muggy today, which I guess means the weather's about to change. And we are doing our tabletop role-playing game gift-giving guide. Thank you again to everybody who's suggested ideas since I started this. Thank you again to Need More Cowbell. For giving me the original idea, yesterday we did gifts under $25. Today is an interesting one because today is best sci-fi tabletop role-playing game products, games, stuff, things. Um, so normally when we talk about this, it's kind of generally assumed we're talking about D&D. But there are other games out there, lots of other games out there, hundreds of thousands of other games out there, despite what certain individuals would have you believe otherwise. And one of the biggest genres that isn't fantasy is sci-fi, space. In fact, right after D&D came out, we had the very first superhero role-playing game, Superhero 2024, and the very first space game, Traveler. So what would I recommend is the best sci-fi tabletop role-playing game product slash best sci-fi tabletop role-playing games. So there's two types of sci-fi games for tabletop role-playing. One, there is the ip specific tabletop role-playing games star wars the role-playing game star trek the role-playing game dune the role-playing game cyberpunk 2020 the role-playing game space hamsters the role-playing game these are all space games based upon you know the expanse in firefly in cowboy bebop in specific universes that we know from other media like video games tv comic books whatever so while you could use the system from D6 Star Wars or any of the other Star Wars versions or the 2D20 Star Trek or whatever for any space game, just, you know, take out all the Star Trek stuff and just go space track. And it, they are just specifically designed and licensed around that specific IP. Then we have on the other side of the fence, words, do this for a profession, ladies and gentlemen. Don't do this at home. The other side of the uh, sci-fi tabletop role-playing games, which are just more like the ones of, here's some rules for space-type stuff. Science fiction, space, whatever. And those would be games like, you know, Stars Without Number Traveler. Then we have, of course, the tons of subdivisions of sci-fi. Well, generally, sci-fi, nine out of ten times means space, future, Sci-fi could also mean post-Holocaust and cyberpunk, dystopian future, uh, gamma world type shit, and anything, just basically anything that talks about a projected future where stuff has changed. So just as easily as space 19, you know, 2027 is your setting, it could also be cyberpunk or post-Holocaust or you know, alternate history. Sci-fi covers a lot of stuff, so it's kind of hard to figure out what the best sci-fi role-playing game slash best sci-fi role-playing game products. Now, for products, that's easy. Toy spaceships. Really, it sort of goes without saying. If you're going to be running any sci-fi role-playing game set in any form of outer space, toy spaceships. And, you know, there's both licensed toy spaceships. There are Star Wars toy spaceships of various sizes, Star Trek, Babylon 5, you can just, you know, you can find toy spaceships anywhere from 25 cents all the way to a couple hundred dollars. So probably the best sci-fi product would be sci-fi specific figures and uh, toy spaceships and props that you could use to represent the technology they find. Like little cards that show guns on them or little cards that show aliens on them or little cards that show the post-apocalypse tech. But now what are the best tabletop role-playing sci-fi games? Well, number one is probably Stars Without Number. Uh, I mean, Traveler is the first, and Traveler is probably the most well-known. But I think Stars Without Number takes the lead on Traveler just a little bit. Um, but it's probably easier to find uh, Stars Without Number. It's got the, the wonderful generating systems. It's, it's, it's you know not specific to any world. It's an OSR-style game. So, yeah, probably put number one. Uh, then Traveler, obviously it's the oldest, it's the, it's the core, it's, you know, retro future, cold sci-fi, classic 1950s, 1960s, 1970s space 
It's a D6 system. It's the only role-playing game I know of where you can die during character creation. Um, Shoner over at Shoner Films talks all about Traveler. So link down below to Shoner if you ever want to listen to some guy talk just about everything you need to know about Traveler. Uh, next up would be any of the Star Wars role-playing games. Oh, yes, Star Wars. D6 Star Wars, D20 Star Wars, or the current Fantasy Flight game Star Wars. I mean, Star Wars universe, great. We all know it. It's ingrained in our public subconsciousness. Both the expanded universe, the Disney universe, the Lucas universe. You can just do anything Star Wars re related with these with the D6 Star Wars. And you can also just use D6 system for non-Star Wars or Star Wars adjacent. So, I, yeah, that's probably three. Um, number four would be Star Wars Edge of Empire, which I guess still falls in number three. Um, then we get to a little bit more obscure ones. Like, you know, because then we're getting out of, like, space and, like, either genre-specific space, like Star Trek. Which is, you could use the Star Trek 3D, 2D20 system for anything, but kind of, yeah... It's specific to Star Trek. Then we have Esper Genesis, which is a 5th edition D20 sci-fi game. So if you're looking for hard sci-fi using the 5e engine, Esper Genesis is pretty good. Shadowrun and Cyberpunk, of course, run neck and neck, but they're, you know, future imperfect. Uh, the only difference between Shadowrun and uh, Cyberpunk is Shadowrun is the Cyberpunk future plus magic so in addition to you know supercomputers and cyber technology and guns and that whole cyberpunk style of life doesn't really matter and mega corporations we also have elves and dwarves and spells so yeah um then if you want to get into another one specific one the dark heresy warhammer 40k role-playing game stuff that's out there. It's kind of pricey, but you know you're guaranteed to have product connected to Dark Heresy because Games Workshop puts out a ton of figures every month for Warhammer 40K, which you can easily use for Dark Heresy. Same with Star Wars. There's, I mean, if you ran a Star Wars game, you would be at no loss finding props. I mean, you could walk into any Target, toy store, Walmart, bookstore, freaking anything and find Star Wars toys and Star Wars figures and Star Wars spaceships and Star Wars art. So really, the amount of stuff available to you to run a Star Wars game ad infinitum. Much less so Star Trek. I mean, it's, it, you can find Star Trek stuff, but it's a little bit harder, you know, than Star Wars. I don't even know who has the Star Trek toy line right now. It's probably Hasbro. Um, but you don't see a lot of Star Trek toys, even when the movies came out. Then we have Starfinder. And, of course, Spelljammer. Starfinder is from Pezo. It is a great system. There's tons of ideas in Starfinder that I absolutely love. Then they took those ideas and made Pathfinder 2nd Edition and ruined everything that was good about Starfinder. But if you look at the Starfinder system, there's some really great ideas in there. If you're looking for D20 fantasy space without any political nonsense, I'd probably go with Starfinder over Spelljammer. Also, the backstory for Starfinder is just brilliant. Because it takes place in the exact same universe that Pathfinder takes place on. And the assumption is, is that the world of Glorian, the world that Pathfinder takes you know, place on, was destroyed, forcing the various races and factions to go out into space and develop the Starfinder universe. And it is an insinuated, and let's face it, this is probably what happened, the world of Glorian, the Pathfinder world, was destroyed by player characters. Basically by a group of adventurers. <sighs> And let's face it, if we know, I mean, the high-level Pathfinder game that I was in that lasted like three, four years ended up with us destroying the world, so I could see it happening. Um, Star Frontiers, but I'm not going to mention that. Then we get, you know, like uh, the post-Holocaust games, like Legacy, Life Amongst the Ruins, Mutant Year Zero, uh, Mutant Crawl Classic, Gamma World, um, Atomic Highway. Uh, there's others, but I would say for just ease of play, ease of finding, and ease of finding props, um, you know, Stars Without Numbers is great It's kind because of, it's a D20 system. It's got great random tables. It's a little clunky. It's kind of nonlinear, but you can't find a lot of Stars Without Numbers props. Traveler, you have to look for it. There are supplements. There are DM screens and modules and stuff like that, and even figures. But again, kind of hard to find. 
But if you want to go, what's the easiest system my sci-fi geek can get into slash find tons of props and um, resources, Star Wars. You got to go Star Wars. Now, I'm going to say the best Star Wars geek to game is West End Games, D6 Star Wars. It's been recently released for an anniversary edition. The, D, the, the West End Games D6 system is easily adaptable to any style of game. There's just something so cathartically awesome about rolling like 7d6 and knowing that you will never be as good as Darth Vader. It literally says in the rules, Darth Vader has 15d6 in lightsaber, but you never will. And it's the Star Wars universe, so it's something we all know. It's ingrained in the public subconscious. Buy my merch, speaking of sub public subconscious. And let's face it, getting props to run a Star Wars game is going to be easy as walking into any store, any Target. You're going to find Star Wars stuff, you know, from Teeny to Mania, Legos, whatever. So that would probably be the number one. It also depends, like, what is your sci-fi bent for the sci-fi player in, that you're talking about? I mean, are they a Star Trek geek? You might want to get into the Star Trek role-playing game. Are they more into, like, you know, hard sci-fi? You might want to go, like, Esper Genesis or Traveler or even D6 Space, or, you know, there's this, it's so much out there. And for, and for accessories, other than the usual stuff, um, books and figures, toys, uh, most of the sci-fi lines have had technical manuals come out, including Warhammer stuff and Star Wars. So if you wanted to give them something like, oh, here's maps of the, all, all the spaceships from Star Trek, you could find that. Um, comic books, novels set in the universe, I mean, The Expanse, the whole series is available on TV and probably on DVD. There's an Expanse video game and an Expanse role-playing game, Cowboy Bebop. Again, all the videos, um, plus so much Cowboy Bebop stuff. Star Wars, Star Trek goes without saying. You would be easily find anything related to Star Trek, Star Trek. If they're more into, like, Firefly, there's tons of Firefly stuff out there. If they're more like, I'm into Mad Max Terminator type stuff, again, there is... Thankfully, most of the sci-fi has had links to major IPs, which has linked to major runs of crap merchandising. So, you know, in one that is where sci-fi science fiction beats fantasy. Is it's just a lot easier to walk into a Target or a Barnes and Noble and find something related to the sci-fi obsession in your in your person's life, be it a book or a technical manual, or a comic book, or stickers, or posters, or documentaries. You can find, I mean, you name it, it's been made for Star Wars, Star Trek, Dune, Cowboy Bebop, Firefly. You know, there's clothes there forever, so especially, you know, Star Wars and Star Trek. On the other hand, there's not a lot of D&D specific stuff out there other than the D&D specific stuff. You can't, you know... I mean, again, yeah, sure, I could go into any bookstore and find a technical manual of the great castles of europe but that's more of a history thing you know i mean it's 50 it's 60 40 i think it's easier to find sci-fi related toys than probably it is D, D related toys for some weird reason probably because there's more sci-fi movies made and sci-fi television shows and more aspects to the sci-fi genre so what's your favorite sci-fi genre i mean i love the expanse i love firefly so i do like space cowboy um Ow, I think I tripped into their fucking teeth. Uh, ideas. Um, I love Mutant Cr Mutant Crawl Classic, um, Mutant Year Zero, the Gamma World, but I also like the uh, the, the the Mad Max post Holocaust. I used to like Cyberpunk. I was really into Cyberpunk for a while, but it, it grows old. Uh, the same with like Paranoia and all the other dystopian futures. You know, I, I want my my future to be over the top with giant spaceship battle so if i'm gonna lean more towards star wars than i am towards cyberpunk um and if i'm gonna have a post -op apocalypse i'd rather have a thunder the barbarian post apocalypse or a mutant year zero post apocalypse than the mad max uh post apocalypse so i do love the um atomic highway system which is why there's gonna find a link with it down below so i've put links to every uh, most of the ones i've mentioned but again probably the easiest thing to find if you want to get sci-fi tabletop role-playing game products is do just you know Star Wars, Star Trek, the the shits out there. It'd be easy enough to get, and then once you get in that stuff, it's easy, e infinitely adaptable to whatever sci-fi thing they're into. You can find stuff easy. So that is the gift giving guide for sci-fi 
for tabletop role playing gamer in your life for this holidays if you have any suggestions please feel free because we will revisit i'm sure all these topics again we still got a way to go before christmas so yeah um what is you know so what are your recommendations what's your favorite tabletop role playing sci-fi game sci-fi genre sci-fi genre do you think hasn't been explored yet how come nobody's done a cosmo ball role-playing game that movie was the bomb you know whatever suggestions are always appreciated if you haven't subscribed please subscribe yet and if you're looking for the best gift to get the tabletop role-playing gamer in your life OGGM merch is available on teespring check out the new shirt with the amazing artwork by andrew m OGGM rocking hits and rolling crits since 2015 yeah copyright trademark whatever pick it up holidays i'll talk to you later i'm old